If you're the average person who already struggles with consuming enough protein on a regular basis, and you've decided because of you know maybe the mainstream narrative to choose a vegan protein because you think that's a superior or a better choice for the environment or whatever your reasons are, just keep in mind that is inferior in comparison to a like whey based product, yeah. right? When or an animal protein source, right? So yeah, I and, think and that's the most important point to make. Vegan diets are some of the worst diets for building muscle. <laughs> Do you believe this guy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're coming in hot, dude. I know. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me tell you where this can't, is. Can't wait for that sound bite know, to get clipped. I know, I know. <laughs> let me tell you where this is coming from. And by the way, fuck we're the journey, man. Man, when you love the journey. The goals just happen. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> no, I do not like journey man anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... I'm too um, tired to fight. Here. I'll tell you where this is coming from, okay? So there was a post uh, on Twitter from really someone who I consider to be one of the smartest people in our space, uh, Brad Schoenfeld. You guys oh, yeah. know who that is, Yeah, right? yeah solid dude. Yeah, very, very smart guy. He's one of the best people in, in the muscle building space. But he did a post that was a bit misleading. I don't think he was trying to mislead anybody, but it did come across... Uh, in a misleading way. And I think people would read it and maybe get the wrong idea. So I'm going to read what he said. Hmm. And then I'll read, uh, I'll talk about the study that was in this, uh, that he was referring to. So what he wrote in this was, when matched for total essential amino acid profile, no differences in muscle development or performance measures between plant and animal-based protein supplements. Additional evidence to suggest that animal proteins aren't inherently more anabolic than plant-based proteins. So- Keyword when matched. Yes. So if you if you hear that, you, if you read that, you think, oh, it's it's the same. Yeah. But the key here is to see that uh, in the studies, they have to match total essential amino acid profile. Yeah. How do you do that with vegetables? Right. So what does that mean? That means you have because uh, plant proteins are lower in the essential amino acids. So for people who aren't familiar, proteins are made up of amino acids. Uh, a certain number number of amino acids are considered essential. They're essential because your body can't make them. You have to eat them or you'll die. So essential amino acids make up proteins. And animal proteins are much higher in essential amino acids than plant proteins. So if you eat enough plant protein to match the essential amino acid intake that you would get from animal protein, then the results are roughly the same. But that's the key. You'd have to eat a lot more. You'd have to eat a lot more plant protein to make the same effect or to get the same effect that you would get from animal protein because animal protein is so much higher in essential amino acids. So if you're eating a vegan diet, if you don't supplement with protein powders, um, in order to hit that number of protein, which is usually studies will show about 0.6 to maybe 0.8 or 0.9 grams per pound of body weight, which is what maximizes muscle growth and performance. So that's mm -hmm. pretty established in studies. In order to, to, to get your protein intake to be equivalent to animal protein intake, you'd have to eat a lot. You'd have to heat a lot of plant protein to make up the difference because of the amino acid profile. Yeah, you're going to have to look at powdered form because uh, the volume of that and trying to assimilate all of those plants would be in, like really difficult to digest. Yeah, well, people point to things like legumes, <clears throat> right, or seeds or nuts. Like, do you know how, like, if you ate, 50 grams of protein of beans. Yeah. Like What's, try eating. What is that going to do to your stomach? Well, try eating 50 grams of protein from beans versus let's say uh, 50 grams of protein from eggs or beef or fish, or if you can tolerate dairy, milk or whatever. It's a lot. And along with that comes a lot of other stuff and it tends to, you know, disrupt your digestion. Plus that 50 grams of protein from beans is probably going to be equivalent to something like 35 grams of protein that you'll find from animal protein because of the essential amino acid. Well, this conversation okay. can sound a little trivial, I think, um, except for the fact that most people under-consume their protein. That's it. So this is where where it's not trivial. Yeah, because... who's eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight, average population? Right. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. And I, I think that's the most important thing to point out in this situation. If you are a hardcore fitness person or the the vegan bodybuilder guy that's probably going to be offended by the way you open this uh who you know counts his macros and hits his targets every single day right. then this doesn't matter it's not a big deal but if you're the average person who already struggles with consuming enough protein on a regular basis 
and you've decided because of you know maybe the mainstream narrative to choose a vegan protein because you think that's a superior or a better choice for the environment or whatever your reasons are just keep in mind that is inferior in comparison to a like whey based product yeah. right when or an animal protein source right so yeah, i think and, that's and, the most important point to make and in the study they used a plant uh protein powder but they used a mix Mm -hmm. where they combine different plant sources. And this is what you'll have to do to get the essential amino acid numbers up. To be able to up. match it, yeah. Like, for example, we work with a company called Organifi, right? Um, we've been working with them for a long time, and they have a plant protein, and I use it because I can't tolerate dairy. But they don't have... It's not a single source of protein. Yeah, it's not just pea protein. No, they use a, a lot of different uh, sources, which combined give you a good amino acid profile. When it comes to animal proteins, you don't have to do that. You could yeah. just have whey. Or right. just have egg or just have beef and you'll get that, right? So, you know, that was, I actually commented on that post and, you know, we went a little back and forth and I said, look, when we're talking to the average person, I'm always going to, I'm always going to comment on a whole food diet. So yes, if you're a vegan and you supplement with plant protein powders, you can make up the difference for sure. But if you don't take supplements, very difficult, very, very challenging. You have to eat a lot, you'd have to eat a lot of different types of plant proteins, and you'd have to eat a higher protein diet with the plants to equal a lower protein diet that you would get with, with animal sources. So that's the big, uh, that's the big reason why. And look, I've experienced this with clients. Now, I've definitely had clients who, who were better off eating vegan, but that had more to do with, and of course, there's individual variances. It had to do with their own individual body. Mm -hmm. But more than that, I've had clients who went plant-based who then added some eggs or added some fish, and they were like, oh my God, I feel so much better. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that's really what we got to watch out for is the deficiencies and like you know be able to supplement that is almost crucial if you're going in that direction. Yeah. So it's just something to always consider. Like uh, with and 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 that's the thing about like animal sources is like a lot of that's already like you know packed in there. So yeah, you know it's something to consider. By the way, do you guys know what the fail rate is with vegan diets? Eighty plus percent. I brought yeah. this up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is by the way, it's the same fail rate you get with any diet. Yeah. You know who sticks to a vegan diet? The, Pe the, the ones that are doing it for a cause, right? For moral you know, reasons moral, or yeah. ethical reasons. Like it's a belief, which right. I totally understand. And I totally respect, but a lot of people are being uh, either coerced or convinced through propaganda that this is better for them. They don't necessarily, it's, this really isn't a moral thing for them. They don't have this huge ethical push for it. Uh, they're just getting this information. Then they go switch to vegan and uh, because it requires more planning, because they're not familiar with what I'm talking about, because processed foods tend to be plant-based or there's more plant-based processed foods, their health worsens. And uh, they, they don't know why or they ignore their signals because they've been told it's better uh, by mainstream media. It's just, yeah. it's just totally not. Oh, yeah. RGB bundle is the giveaway today. That's MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. All three. It's the most popular bundle that we have. You can get it for free, but you got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that drop this episode. Also, go to our new Mind Pump Clips channel, subscribe to that channel, and turn on notifications on that channel. Do all those things, and if we like your comment, we'll notify you that you won the RGB bundle right now. Also, that bundle's on sale. For everyone else, you can still get it at 50% off. It's still going on, okay? Crazy sale. We also have an individual MAPS program on sale, MAPS Suspension. It's a suspension trainer program. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code JULY50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. So I um, watched something on Netflix the other day that I, I was wondering if you guys knew. I knew nothing about this person uh, until I saw this little mini docu-series. Um, I forgot the name of the docu series, but it was about a guy named DB Cooper. Oh yeah, uh, are you both familiar? DB Cooper. You know, yeah. I read of course, about. Of course, you guys. Okay, know. so when I was a kid, there was a there was this the elusive DB Cooper. There was this book series that I used to get in the library called Unsolved Mysteries, yeah. and in there was like Bermuda Triangle, Bigfoot, aliens, and one of them was about DB Cooper. A whole there, book dedicated to it. There were little, they were like skinny books, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like a whole series of them, and it was about this guy who did this heist. And uh, jumped out of a plane, and they never found him. Yeah, again, he got away with all. Nobody knows what happened to him. What, what out of a commercial with? plane, which is crazy. 
Because, mm-hmm. I mean, he had to slow the plane down, get him to come lower. So like, tell the whole story because I literally read it when I was a kid and I don't remember all the details. Oh, so you haven't seen the... So there's a Netflix no. series that's out right now. And have you started watching it, Justin? Yeah, I watched okay. about two episodes of it and they yeah recap it pretty nicely. And also there's this whole thought that uh, the cold case detectives that's behind it, yeah. like they're pretty sure and certain so far that they got the actual D.B. Cooper. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I'm still engaged. They haven't obviously confirmed it yet. But. Yeah, I'm far enough along to know that the one you're looking at right now they fail at they continue yeah. to fail uh-huh. at, and i don't think they solve it at all okay um but it's uh i did not know anything and i was like so blown away by all the references that i had seen before and just never he's like a cultural icon yes yeah. so like, okay so he so he okay so he there there's a short plane ride from um it's the one we've been on before it's, too it's portland yes. to um that little Sp- not spokane is it spokane it's one of those yeah. it's like one of those short little rides okay. from from seattle, portland, i think yeah portland, portland to seattle, seattle or something it's like a 45 minute flight or whatever like that and uh he gets on there and he basically tells the stewardess that he has a bomb on his in his briefcase mm. and then, remember this is 1971 right yeah. so like you could totally which is brilliant i mean the way that he did all this was like brilliant because he, he was very calm and and brought her over so it was just her and him having the conversation nobody else really heard them so yep. there was no panic he did it all in a way where there was no immediate panic is, have you which is why the- why he's a cultural icon is because Nobody got hurt. Have you, yeah. have Nobody you seen, got hurt, and he basically robbed the government. Have you seen the picture, the the sketch of him that's from yeah. back then? Yeah, with yeah. Like the glasses. Yeah, yeah. Him? Okay. Yeah, because he had his sunglasses on the entire time, or what about that? Right. So, so where did he get the money? I don't remember. So okay, so he asked. So he says he's got a bomb, and when they land at the airport in forty five minutes, his demand is two hundred k and four life vests. Yeah. Or, I mean, four parachutes. parachutes. Oh yeah. So another part of his brilliance that they talk about is that he didn't ask for one just pa- one right. one parachute. So give him a faulty parachute so he wouldn't be able to jump out of the plane or something like well, that. Well, right? that and also it assumes that he's taking on hostages. Exactly. Yeah. So they assume they assume he's probably taking hostages with him also. So they, of course, give him 200 k which is now valued at like a million dollars today's money or what that, right? So they give him his 200 k his four at that, and then they take the plane takes off again. When they take off again, they're flying over like a really remote area in Washington. Washington, Nevada, they're not sure uh, exactly where where he's at when this happens. But he sends the stewardess up front, and now he's the plane's empty. It's him, like a stewardess or two, and then they, like the two pilots. That's all that's on the plane on this flight now. And of course, they're already FBI's alerted. They're following the plane. They're tracking everything like that. Well, he sends the stewardess all the way front. He's sitting calmly in the back, and he tells the the pilot to uh, drop the I forget the drag or whatever like that mm-hmm. on the plane, slow it down to like two hundred something miles an hour. Pilots are like. We can't do that. He's like, yes, you can. It'll fly. Trust me. So he knows enough about aviation that he they can actually right. get away and, and do lower some, the altitude yeah, substantially. Lowered the altitude, slowed the plane down, and then tells the stewardess to go up to the front. And when she went up to the front, he lowers the staircase out the back and literally walks out, walks out the staircase, and then jumps out out the plane. Never found. Yeah, never found. And it was like over like a crazy huge forest, and they were like search parties, everything coming after him, and yeah. never were. Able- and now, obviously, this guy had some survival. So th- there's all these like speculations that he had to been like Military, special forces, yeah. or you know, for him to be able to jump out of a plane like that, know that about the speed of the planes, and, what if and he then- just died. <laughs> He's stuck in a yeah, tree. Right? We found him. Well, they actually, I mean, they totally, they combed the enti- that entire forest and said that there was no way that he is, is his, his, his body. Well, the was- interesting part too is like later on, like, I guess a kid found like part of the money because he, he asked for it all in like $20 bills, right? Yeah. And so then like dug up and there was like, I don't know, five, six, six six thousand $6,000 yeah. worth that they found. But it's like, then later on, there was speculation that maybe they came back and planted that there to kind of, you know, leave them off, off uh, uh, you know, off trail. And also, too, there's like speculation maybe, you know, because I guess it's like 20 something extra pounds uh, for the amount, like 100,000 or whatever yeah. amount of cash that he, he wanted in 20s. Like that would have like weighed him down with his parachute. And they're like, I, maybe he left mo- the majority of it on the plane. You know, and then had somebody on the inside kind of take it, or oh. there, there's all this like interesting, real. But you you start thinking about it because it was so sophisticated uh, how he pulled this off. It was very very well thought out. He was in a disguise. His hair was dyed black and shiny. And, like they they said, like one of the, um, the the people on the plane said that it was obviously he had a lot of makeup on, uh, and so it's like his facial features like they think were probably different and so anyways like and that was or- organized to where they even saw flares 
like at the bottom and th- that never got investigated but there was like flare shots so obviously they're trying to think like well somebody marked it somebody like marked it and then they all swooped in and picked him up you know, because it was very... Uh, or he died. You know, or he just died. Yeah, or he yeah. just died. You know, sometimes uh, we're like, we create these stories when... when and you know, well, the mystery well, of if he died, fun, the money would have been found. If he would have died, you mean on the jump he died? You know how hard it would be to find someone in some of these places sometimes? I know they say they comb the... the oh, the, by now though, you, I mean, he it became so popular. I mean, millions of people have spent... It's like a treasure their, hunt looking Yes, for like people mm-hmm. have spent their lives... Like I, I told Katrina, one of the most fascinating parts of Washington Talking is like, could you imagine being married to me if i was the guy who was so fascinated with this story that i dedicated 30 years of my life <laughs> trying to find him yeah like That's come on dude this guy yeah he's yes like dude like come on bro like R- seriously like i mean it's I, i'm like intrigued by it but like to dedicate your life to trying to figure this case out like come on dude get, i think you got in a divorce over it i think that's how yeah. like, somebody how, was somebody was searching for his money though yeah th- that obsessive about his case and he, I mean, they they put together like this crazy Whoa. CIA, FBI, yeah. retired group of guys. There's like, wow. I want to say like 40 people. Uh-huh. They're all like 50 years and above, special forces, CIA, FBI. Yeah. Well, I don't these, know, and man. you know, some, some of the motivation is to be the guy that caught him, right? Of course. So then you go down history and like your name is is associated totally. with- Totally. So it's, again, it's, it's it, and, and people that are sleuths or like, you know, detectives, right? Like that's like the the- golden goose right you, you could be the guy that caught him you imagine this guy's like a grandpa now it's like his big secret grandpa tell us yeah. about when you when how you opened up your bar oh yeah i started my bar the back coolest in- story ever Tops yeah but no he just right? doesn't tell yeah. anybody it's a secret yeah yeah until yeah. he's on you know on his death i just think i mean i i had never heard i don't know how i never heard the story I've, i'm kind of ashamed of myself i knew you guys would know i remember i remember distinctly the picture of him on the book that i read and it's the one where he's wearing the dark glasses yes. and it's like a sketch yep. yeah of his face and they said that uh because they released that like that um it brought in way too many leads like and so this is why they didn't really get anywhere because it was such a generic white guy businessman you know (laughs) face it's like everybody's like turning on their neighbor and like reporting them in yeah it it just kind of caused this like false hysteria some of these cases are so interesting didn't they catch the zodiac killer they eventually found out who that was right they did right i'm pretty sure after the fact after way later yeah Yeah. way later i mean and this was a guy that would tell the police what he was going to do, when he was going to do it. He would send these like to the, these, to the San Francisco Chronicle, right? Yeah, he would, send, he would send. He would leak codes to to San Francisco Chronicle. Did they find him, Doug? Eventually, yeah. His name was Gary Francis Post. Was he alive when they caught him, or was this Post? Uh, I'm not sure. Fact? Gary, I think it was after the fact. I, I think. No, was, I mean like like after he died. Yeah, that's what I think. Oh, I think I don't think they pieced it together in his life. Away with I don't it believe like he. Ser- I don't remember him serving time. Hmm. If I, I'm pretty sure, no, I don't know for let sure. Let me double check this. I've seen the I've seen the doc. You know what's weird too. about that that whole <clears throat> era that that decade, like the 60s and 70s. You don't hear about this anymore. But that was like serial killers were everywhere. Yeah. Do you, what's the last serial killer? You guys well, you know what's crazy? They actually, they're starting to tie it in to MK Ultra. They started talking. What's trip trip me out? They started talking about hijacks. Mm-hmm. Hijacks at that time. Oh, that was a thing. Wasn't bro, it? it was four four a month. <laughs> for a month could you imagine what? hey could you imagine today's it social media time if like yeah. could you imagine four hijacks happening a month like oh, people would, like people will be madness like, Hold madness on. Was, it, was it wasn't there a plane that was hijacked um by iranian ter- terrorists before the olympics or was that the building that it was a building it was a building okay was that the 1970s? Well, I, I don't know, but the fact that, that I don't know, really in, in the like 70s that. that that hijacking became and he like made it popular and became a thing. Yeah, he and ruined it, airport security, like all this stuff for us to experience now. Because like before that, it was really cool to fly. Like you would go in and like uh, it was the experience of it was very casual. Like there's barely it was high class, bro. there was not well, even it was, any security. It was less. Pictures? It was yeah. less about protecting and security, and it was more about the experience, entertaining yeah. you. Yes, yeah. and like making sure that you like enjoyed the experience. Okay, so you guys ever? Okay, so if you look at pictures of the experience of people flying planes in the seventies and sixties, and people in trains in the nineteen thirties and twenties, mm-hmm. we've gone backwards. Oh yeah, you, you go on a train now versus what it looked like in the '30s, or you go on a plane now. I it's mean, just a we fart all, tube. It's yeah, it's, it's so awful, different. Now. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, totally different. Yeah. yeah, it's so different. Yeah, speaking of fart tube, have you guys uh, heard of brown noise? 
<laughs> no, but I'm What curious. do you think brown noise is, Justin? Well, I, I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> I, I've heard of like the brown note. Like they've been like messing around like di with different uh, frequencies. <laughs> Basically, uh, like I don't know if this is just urban legend or not, but you could hit a brown note and cause somebody to shit their pants. Well, no, that's real. That's not what this is, but that's real. Okay, well, that's, that's an real. experimental that's weapon. That's a real thing? It's an experimental oh, weapon. Oh, I think you actually brought, one of you brought it up. It was yes. like a, a, military, a military thing where they send a noise and it makes everybody shit their pants. Yeah. Yes, you lose control of your bowels. Yes. It's, a, it's a it's like a anti riot uh, <laughs> research, right? So like, is it effective? Is it really? Is it like a hundred percent effective? Of like uh, one in every. It five. makes people super ill, or and you and or you shit your pants. And then there was another one where why why didn't they pull those out with all there these? There was another one. Words? Yeah, right now, saving that. Yeah. There was another one that they fire it into a crowd. They aim it at you, and when you yell or talk you hear your voice back in your own head like a split second later and it disorients you so much that you don't want to say anything. Yeah, you stop so talking. They could shut up a, pr a crowd by shooting at this at them. Like, Ooh, this could come in handy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who put the dishes in here like... <laughs> okay, so okay, so tell what is brown noise then? What is brown noise? So brown noise... Is, okay, so you know what white noise is. Yeah. So you, I, I have a white noise machine for my son. So yeah. we play that in his room yeah. and it that way he doesn't hear us waking up in the morning and helps him sleep and whatever, right? Yeah, I feel like white noise would be like... A, a uh, snap of a saltine cracker. <laughs> do you under, do you understand the do you understand the the science it's, behind it's white noise? How it sandwich. works? <laughs> Sal, say what? Do you understand the science of how the white noise actually I, works? Is it that it mimics the sound in the womb? Is that what? It, is that I don't know. I, I'm asking. I don't know the answer to that. But I, so I had like this little hack that I figured out, and I think I shared it on the podcast years ago. Um, but I used it again because it was 4th of July. I had my aunt and uncle over and they had their little dog and they went over and it was 4th of July fireworks going off like crazy. And I said, oh, and they're like, yeah, you know, he's in his, he's, he's going to go crazy. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. And I said, oh, well we could throw some white noise in there. Like I do for, uh, my dogs. And they're like white noise. I'm like, oh yeah. Like well, I figured this out 4th of July, uh, quite a few 4th of July. polka music. Yeah. <laughs> I put, <laughs> was white noise. and so Boom, pop, pop. I set, the, I set them up. <laughs> And they were like blown away. They're like, "Oh my god, he hasn't barked at all." Because and, and, they yeah. can't decipher. Between yeah, so I, it does. It like, yeah, it's, I think it, it somehow blocks it. Like, if you, if so, if the fireworks are happening outside, and as long as I can make the white noise between, yeah, the, the they're not able to like. He, maybe it doesn't dis disrupt them as much, or yeah, I mean, they didn't, he didn't a single peep out of them. Well, so brown time. noise is a much lower frequency. And it helps. They're finding in studies it helps people with autism, ADHD. Other neurodivergent, um, uh, you know, conditions hmm. where people feel calm, like they'll play it, and people will say, "Oh my God, I feel so calm and focused when the sound Just is like in the background." I wonder hum. if the Brain FM is using that. I, I guarantee. I so, guarantee. Doug, so Doug just pulled yeah. up white noise. Since white noise contains all frequencies at equal intensity, it, it can masks. mask loud sounds that stimulate your brain. Doug, look up brown. magical for dogs. Oh so. wait, look at this pink noise versus wait, there's pink brown noise. noise, black. Hold noise. on, what's pink noise? <laughs> Pink noise. <laughs> what the hell's pink noise? What no, is pink sorry, noise? <laughs> Thank you, Justin, oh, for that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so the color of noise is determined by the You're energy welcome. of the sound signal. Specifically, it depends on how energy is distributed over various frequencies or the speed of sound. Okay, so what is pink noise? Uh, nature is full of pink noise, including rustling leaves, steady rain, wind, and heartbeats. Uh, so obviously, so, so, so Brain FM is using... Spice. <laughs> So Brain FM is using all these. Yeah. They have to. Yeah, yeah. Now, what does it say about brown noise there, Doug? So I was reading about how people with ADHD, I was reading about neurodivergence because obviously you guys know I have ADD. And so they were saying how this helps people focus. So they'll play this in the background and they'll feel kind of calm and stuff. What does okay, it say about so brown? Okay, so brown noise, also called red noise, has higher energy at lower frequencies. This makes it deeper than pink and white noise. Examples of brown noid, uh, noise include low roaring, strong waterfalls, and thunder. Mm, I love thunder. <sighs> Not real thunder, though. Pretend thunder. Oh, real thunder. Thunder's I don't like awesome. real thunder. Yeah. I, don't, I can't sleep with real thunder. What's black noise? Is there black noise, too? Yes, there is. Yeah, let's, let's uh, so black noise is an informal term used to describe lack of noise. It refers to complete silence or mostly silence with bits of random noise. Oh, okay. Have you guys, did you guys know that there's a room? It's, it's the most soundproof room mm -hmm. in the world, apparently. They, they've designed it. Wouldn't it make you go crazy? Yeah, if that's what it? they said. Yeah. Maybe you could look it up, Doug. Mm -hmm. I think the longest, there's like a record for the longest someone's ever been in there. It's not very long. It's like a few minutes. 
because it's so That'll silent in there. Out. You hear the blood pumping through your veins. So what? you can hear your own internal, and it literally drives people crazy. Where is it? Like, is it way underground? Like, no, I think it's and how how I think far, it's in the Bay how Area. How far off is like a float tank from that? I feel like oh. a float tank. You get that? Uh, like, no, not like this. This is so well. That takes care of your other senses, right? Yeah. So like you're just you feel like you're suspended, uh, but then like taking all the noise that's the out right on there? top of that. Is that it? That's not it. Look up, Doug, the most soundproof room in the it world. It says the quietest no, room, it on, is. Oh, the quietest it. room okay. on Earth. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. What does it say? It's the anechoic chamber of Orfield Laboratories in Minnesota. The space is so quiet that the longest anybody has been able to bear it was 45 minutes. How bad? I would love to go in there. I do. I just know. to see what it's Me like. Me too. I'm kind of I'm curious. curious because that doesn't look like if you're just looking at it. So doesn't... does it... I thought it was like some weird Does it mess with you because if I were to like, if you were to speak, you would not hear your voice because your voice wouldn't bounce off the wall and give you feedback or something? It would just or die? Or you just hear too much of yourself. I think that's something like what Justin said. So the quieter room, the more things you hear. Your ears start to adapt to the quietness. You'll hear your heart beating. Sometimes you'll hear your lungs and hear your stub stomach gurgling loudly. Yes. <laughs> just, dude, the stomach gurgle is the worst. <laughs> Just talking to you. Hey, hey, that's a good. I want one of those rooms for my kids act up. Hey, <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, hey, five minutes of the quiet room. Yeah, you gotta go to the quiet room. Why we're on all these this crazy stuff? Did you guys see that? Uh, what Audi does in their new cars, the new technology they have with red lights. Mm -mm. No. This is cool. This is and Doug, maybe you could pull this up. Andrew, have you seen this yet on the red lights? Okay, this is cool. So, and I don't know what why Audi has access to this, but their new cars now have the timing of all the red all the lights signals and will tell you when your lights about to turn green what's even mm. cooler than that they took it a step further that let's say how you put in your like That's your power. your your ways <laughs> ways app and you say where you're going it'll it pick will the tell, fastest route it'll that? tell you the speed to keep to hit all green lights Oh wow, my god, that's sick! Is that sick or that's what? Sick. A dad invented that. Exactly, 100%. dude. That it, was a dad. And you're not gonna tell your kids that you know this, right? <laughs> yeah. Like I've always done this to try and time. I look over to the left at like the light that's like just turned red. And you and trick I them. Just, yeah. Give them the old Jedi mind trick. <laughs> oh, oh, I. Yeah, dude. they're like, wow. Yeah, yeah I, I got away fun. with that for a long time with my kids. Yeah. For a long time, like, but change the change the light. Like, I don't feel like it. Nah, I don't. Yeah. all right, fine. See, yeah. So there used to be there used to be an old trick that you could do that I I haven't tried it in a long time. Where you I, flicker your lights. Yes. Is that a myth? So because I, I thought that too. Uh, yeah, because it that's worked like maybe one out of twenty times for me. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the story is that that emergency personnel have a flickering light they shine. And it triggers the light to change. Yeah. Is that true? I've heard that. I don't know if it's true or not. It might be one of those like nineties. Yeah, somebody <laughs> told yeah, it it worked all of us that, dude. Yeah. We all heard. Is that. it an urban legend or is it true, Doug? I'm going to look it up. I I, um, I did that all the time as a kid. I I'd roll too. up and I flick 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 flick, and yeah. then you know. Yeah. It's like maybe I'm not getting the timing of it or. Something. It might be like the blowing in the Nintendo cartridge. Yeah. Everybody just thought yeah, that it was worked. Real. I don't no, care what anybody they did. Says. A, they did a study work. on it. That's not, really. Yeah, they did. They did a study. They swear to God. What about this? Is why some studies are faulty, bro. I don't believe that. Still, hold on. Oh, the what United is States police ambulance have access to some special spotlight stoplights. The strobe lights, were tr when triggered, can change the lights to green. Yes, thereby allowing emergency. Ah, no. It is true. Okay. I, there's probably none of them around here, though. Yeah, they probably changed them. Wow, all. that's a real thing, though. Okay, that's crazy. So it used to work. So there was a there was a light in my hometown that it used to work on, and that's why and like that's where you I lived in the cuts. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's there was where, one light. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even have to stop. There's three. Bro. Ah, there's no cars. We're in the field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Did you guys did you guys do that because you're in such a like a remote area? You don't even listen to students. Yeah, read. yeah. You you run a lot of lot. You run a lot of lights and you run a, run a lot of step signs for sure too. But I've been busted for that too. So you, did you really? Yeah, yeah. Of course, because you you think they're you assume that there's no cop and then you just have happen to, to roll it when there's a cop there so i got a i got a i got a ticket once for doing a burnout just i just decided to be cool because i had a couple <laughs> girls in my car so i'm like check this out i i did it got pulled over and i and the cops were they they threw me down they put me on the hood oh yeah. my god like that cuffed me yes i think they were trying to teach me i mean now as an adult i look so back. i got this I, I got to have to me so i did a burnout and in a residential area 
and the car in front of me was a Suburban, and it was an undercover. Oh. And he threw his siren on top of his roof. Right in front of you? Yeah, and then came out and fucking yelled. I guess, he, you but, made some brown noise after that. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. I was, like, what are the, I was like, what are the chances the car in front of me is an undercover like that, dude? And then, yeah. But he didn't do it. I mean, he, I, I don't think technically he can do anything. He wasn't on duty. He was totally dressed he in like- He just wanted to scare. Yeah, he did. You know, I was like a 16-year-old yeah. kid, you know, so he came over and like tried to, you know, threaten me and say I could lose my license. That's, so, was, that's I think they were trying to scare me because yeah. I, he pulled up. It so worked. I did the yeah. burnout. <laughs> I saw worked. I saw the lights and I'm like, oh, fuck. And then he pulls up. He gets out of his car and I'm in my car. And he goes, do you know why I pulled you over? And I played stupid because I didn't see him before. And I'm like, he must have heard me and he's guessing. Yeah. So I'm like, no. Get out the fucking car. And that was it. Dude, his switch went off. And he gets me out, cuffs me. And I remember being like, God damn, bro, this is a little excessive. Like yeah. I just did a burnout. Like, calm down. When we were when Gave we your were... whole speech about why I shouldn't do it, why it's so dangerous or whatever. When we were in high school, we got a, a, a got like three cop cars, pulled us over, took us all up, put us against the car. And so supposedly, uh, it was like a Friday night. We were driving in my buddy's suburban, and his dad had a custom license license plate that said bend to the top. But was shorter, shortened because you can't say bend to the top. Right, so right, it was right. like B E N T T P or something yeah, like yeah, that, right? Yeah. And the cops pull us over and they thought for sure we were these people that were like TPing houses and harassing people all weekend because they got all these calls. That, oh, because it said TP? Yeah, because it oh. said Ben TP. And, and that was like their. their <laughs> like that's so much your thing. You get a yeah. customized license plate. <laughs> yeah. We got jackets. Yeah. They literally thought <laughs> Where's that. Where's the TP game? They literally thought that's literally what they thought. <laughs> You're gonna tell me you guys are the kids doing that? Your so license plate says like, Ben TP, and, the, and my buddy's car. like, uh, yeah. "That means Ben to the top." My dad's a big rock climber. <laughs> <laughs> we love TP so TP much, yeah, gang. Then we get a license plate that says it. <laughs> the dumbest. Oh, no, wow. of all it's time. like a Reno nine one one fucking episode, well, dude. Great totally detective was. work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got us. It must be that got guy us, right Dan there. <laughs> Show us the toilet paper. <laughs> 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 That's guy in the back's looking at his shoe. It was. Like, oh, it was no. a Reno 911 drive yeah. episode. 100% oh, felt dude. like that. Wow. Hey, speaking of dad, so I got to tell you guys about my dad, right? Uh, so, you know, you guys know how he uses Ned, right? He uses Ned because it helps him with his inflammation and his joints. He feels better when he takes it. Well, anyway, I gave him the capsules. So they have, so for people that know, Ned is, is uh, hemp oil extract. And you can either buy it in a bottle where you can squeeze out a, like a in, in a dropper, so like it's like a tincture, or you could buy it in capsule. It's the same exact thing. The only difference is capsule is more convenient uh, and you don't taste it or whatever, but otherwise the same product. So anyway, I give him the capsules all the time and he only takes one or two max. Every day he takes it in the morning, good for his arthritis, whatever. Anyway, he ran out. So he's like, hey, Sal, he goes, do you have any more? Ned, I said, yeah, I do. I have some at work. So I, I come here. We ran out of the capsules. So I said, I'll give you the same thing. It's in a dropper though. Use that for now until Ned says sends up some sends us some more capsules. So I give it to him. I think nothing of it. Anyway, I go over to my parents' house. It's like, I don't know, like a week later. And my dad, you know, he's barbecuing and he goes, You know, Sal, I've been feeling really weird. I said, What do you mean you've been feeling really weird? I don't know. I feel it weird all day, you know, it's hard to focus and this and that. So we're going through this thing. Like, what's, what are you talking about? Is everything okay? Like what's going on? (laughs) So then it dawns on me. I'm like, how many, how much of the Ned are you, are you taking? Yeah. And he goes, Oh, I I squeeze it. You know, I take it. I said, what do you mean you squeeze it? I said, do you know that, that like, and I, if you see on the dropper, there's like lines or whatever. Right. And I showed him, I said, this much is equivalent because it's a strong bottle. I give him the real 1, strong. 1,500 milligrams. Yeah. yeah, I said, this much is equivalent to a capsule. Oh, no, because I, I did I did the I whole, did the whole thing. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so my dad was getting hella cannabinoids <laughs> in his body. Couldn't figure out why he was feeling kind of weird. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, this is strong. This is really, really high <laughs> high dose. You have to. You need a very little amount. That's why it lasts so That's why it's so expensive. So he's like, okay. It was just cracking me up, though, because... My dad, you know, it's probably got my hypochondriac. Uh, <laughs> I feel a bit weird, you know. I don't know what's Things going are on. Happening. Yeah. yeah, my mom's like, "Oh my god, your dad's been telling me he's going to die or something." Well, I was <laughs> kind of in a pit die. driving back. I told you your brother dogs with me, and they're driving me crazy. And uh, the, I gave Arlo some because it was like, did it work for him? Yeah, it, yeah, he totally was just, and it was. I kind of felt a little. I'm like, oh no, I hope he doesn't get sick or anything, because like he was, he was at that point where he always tries to just like. F- forcibly snuggle you like he's like we call him the invasive lover like he's just <laughs> like just smashes his face on and that sounds bad but it's true um 
And so he was like in the back of my truck, you know, kind of making his way up. And, and then he starts kind of wobbling a little and his eyes are like this. And he's like, ooh. And then I'm like, lay down, buddy, lay down. Mm-hmm. And then finally, once he laid down, out, dude, like mo- the majority of the trip it's, is chill. It's, it's, great. it's strong because my dad, he had some <laughs> CBD gummies that my aunt gave him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's, oh, he's like, it doesn't work. I'm like, dad, I said, the dose that I, that Ned is constant, strong. You feel it. This other stuff, you have to eat like 15 gummies to notice anything at all. It's strong stuff. So he literally one cap, one little, and they're small, one little capsule or whatever. And, and he's like, it's, it's, it's arthritis and everything feels much better. Yeah, yeah. It was just funny to hear him. <laughs> yeah, <it was laughs> I had funny. to like detective it. <laughs> you, you know, speaking of our partners that we work with, uh, Max has become a huge, uh, magic spoon guy. Now. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. That's like his, like one of his go-to snacks. He'll eat it dry too. So we just fill it up in his little. Oh, that's so great. He's getting whey protein. I, well, you know, one of the things that I was telling Katrina is that I I really want to lunch and dinner really good, but breakfast, you know, breakfast is you know waffles, pancakes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's just not Kids a lot of just get drawn to those crazy. Carbs. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's carb heavy. Yeah, and I was telling her, I'm like, and she, he loves waffles and pancakes, and because he's not, normal. Right, <laughs> you know, it's basically cake. You know, it's cake for breakfast. It's in the, it's in the name, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah give it away. Yeah, it's pretty much cake for breakfast, hun. You know, what I'm saying so with, <laughs> with some sugar <laughs> drizzled over the top of it. So not weird that he uh, he loves it, right? Especially for a kid who doesn't get any other sugar, right? So I've been trying to get her to to add like more meats or more proteins in there, and you know, he just tends to gravitate towards the sweeter, more carbohydrate yeah. type of foods for her breakfast. But she has recently introduced Magic Spoon for him. And this, I don't know, it's we're probably on, we did it before vacation. So we're probably on week three or four now of consistently. It's now oh, become good. a staple and he actually asks for it all the time now. So I'm pretty excited. Because it tastes he, good. Yeah, no, it's great. But he gets, and, and, now he gets the protein. Right, which is, I think, you know, I, I think it starts now, like trying to make sure that they're they're doing that consistently. I think that's part of why I struggled with it most of my life was that we our meals weren't centered around a protein. Mm-hmm. And I think if had I been raised that way, I think it would have been easier for me to go after and get protein. I just was, I was trained carb-heavy foods. I could tell the difference when Aurelius has uh, a protein-heavy breakfast, which he usually does, but sometimes he doesn't. I could tell the difference in his behavior. He's just more, it's, you know, remember we did the episode with the, for the, with the CGMs? Mm-hmm. And they talked about how having a protein-heavy breakfast controls blood sugar throughout the day, regardless of what you eat later on. Yeah. It makes a, a difference. I feel like I could tell if he has uh, fruit in the morning or something that's more carbohydrate heavy, I notice a little difference in his behavior. Um, but luckily he likes, and what he usually has is three egg yolks. He doesn't even have the whites. He just wants, he just eats the yolks every, mm. almost every single morning. That's and cool. So, yeah, that's really good. That so, is really good. Yeah, it makes me, anyway, I got to tell you guys about something I learned about the other day that, you know, the internet, when I remember when it, when it, I'm old enough to remember when it really became a thing and the opportunities that, we're going to open up and all the different markets and things and ways you can make money and ways yeah. you can communicate with people. And it was just all these wonderful dreams. And I didn't <laughs> realize that outside. this yeah. also meant you could do all kinds of weird shit and go in the wrong direction, whatever. Anyway, did you know that there's a category of men that, uh, that women will um, cater to online and make money off of? And they're called, they have a term for these guys. Sims? No, oh. they're called pay pigs. Pay pigs? Pay pigs. Pay pigs. <laughs> okay, you know what a pay pig is? No, I don't. Man. These are men. I mean, you introduced bronies to me, now pay pigs. This yeah. is interesting, dude. Oh, bro. This bronies is, was an interesting this, one. For me. This is, in, this is to me, blows me away. These are men that they're online and they go on these pay sites with women and they get off on women demanding money from them and them giving women money. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a chick, oh, that would be not. awesome. Wow. I would be so all over that, dude. You don't got to show any that Sign me up for pay pigs. Yeah. They, they literally is coming to it. Okay, they, like to be, they, like to be, they like to be fined. That's what they call it, fined. Right. So they find them. Uh, they'll, they'll give them disparaging remarks like, you idiot, you, yeah, whatever. Wow. So they like to be talked down to. And then they like to be told, you, you got to pay me. You got to pay me $1,000 because you didn't do what I told you or because you're an idiot or whatever. I don't like your hat. Dude. That's a $50 fine. And they get off and they send these women money. I was reading about this one woman. That is a thing? Like have, dude. There was one woman that was making a couple thousand dollars a week off of a, off of like three or four pay pigs. And they just pay her because she tells them and they get off on it. I swear I'm not making this up. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Why they don't have to that show work them for guys? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> the market would be saturated right away. 
Yeah. Wow. Can you believe that? That is fascinating. I know your wheels are turning out. They are turning right now. I could do that. Adam's like, I'll do that all day long. <laughs> they must have just been, like, as a kid, I'm just, like, trying to picture, like, this pay pig guy growing up, you know, like, just being scolded constantly and was just like. Mm. Look at the, oh, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Get, get out of it. Look at what it says. Finance. Not your average side hustle. The women making thousands from pay pigs who enjoy being financially dominated. That's the term. What? Wow. Financially dominated. And they don't have to do anything other than like yell and you get know, his, yeah, insulting them. the men. No, they, 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 it's called being financially exploited and they, they get off on it. Okay. So what caught, what, <laughs> any guesses? Always when you have these weird fetishes, there is some sort of like psychological thing that's happened. Oh, hold on, hold on. Scroll down, Doug. I oh, want to yeah. read more right there. What's what the commonality? It here? says one woman who's cashing in on the fetish says she starts a typical day by posting a degrading Twitter message. <laughs> telling her followers to pay her. Right, like this, rise and shine, my little ATMs. I know exactly what buttons to push to make you spit out as much money as I want, and I do it with an evil smile. Oh, wow. 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 And they pay her. Wow, that's insane. All right, so oh, like money keywords like Findom, huh? Findom, Pay Pig, and Money Slave. Dude, this is a whole nother level, because I remember, like, you know, there was like a... Um, they, there was like Amazon wish lists where a lot of like like girls would would point to like yeah, yeah, yeah. and then guys like oh hoping to get some kind of reward or attention would just buy them like whatever the that's hell. super common yeah out there. but yeah. like this is like they get nothing in return other than well what it, you know what it sounds like to me it's like uh, virtual dominatrix oh, so it's, it's like it's in it's that like, category yeah. yeah it's like t like the virtual form of that because I can't see you in person and then probably guys that have dispendable incomes right that, that have so much money that it's maybe a, or maybe they don't <laughs> yeah it's really bad if you're like look what it says really they want to be bad. laughed at and called pathetic uh, that's just sad dude if you really want to break it down like, I don't you know to like me like the guy that poor bastard like what like to me this was strange about it is because normally you know they would have to like show them nudity or do so something. I, yeah but i'd be i'd be interested you get nothing out of i'd it. be interested you i mean you're assuming that they're, i think they're they're powerful men who have a lot of money who are used to being in power and in control and they get off on not being right. powerful and like, in control. No, nobody tells them no anymore that's right so they need they need someone to punk them like, you know, everyone's like, afraid of them place, everyone's yeah. afraid of them everyone does what they that say they got all the power they have the money and so they get off on somebody else who is you think so? instead of physical pain i mean that's what words, i would right? i would guess that's more likely than the dude who's like barely getting by financially and just gets punked all day <laughs> well, it just reminds me of uh billions right or, yes. Or, yeah. With, like uh, he's a powerful figure yeah. that everybody is fearful of him. And so he gets off on the. Yeah. The, somebody else like whipping him around. And yeah. I, I would. I but would. They're, they're yeah. literally. This has to be the easiest. I don't know. It's like literally. What a score. That's a gold mine. For, yes. For, I mean. I mean, who's the brilliant chick who figured it out first? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like she's and does she genius. Feel, and does she feel bad or does she feel like, well, hey, that's No, she created a genre. She's brilliant. <sighs> Hopefully she wrote a book. Yeah. <laughs> see if there's a see if there's a pay pig book, Doug. There's got to be pay some pigs. some girl figured this out. You know what? I hate to say it. You know, and she went. She probably hate, hooked her I, homies up. I and hate said, to say yeah. it, but it's always it's always men that yeah. are that will give money for the weirdest, stupidest shit. What yeah. is wrong with men? I don't know. They're paying for. You know, there's no woman. There's is it, is no. Is there, there's not a single woman. Is it what's parts. wrong with men or women are just a step ahead? Are they smarter? I, I think probably both, but I don't, I, you can't, brain, I, brain I guarantee ninjas. you, I guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you there's not a single woman on earth that gets off on giving a man money because he tells her that she needs to give him money. There's not a single yeah. one. This is a guy thing. So weird. What is wrong with dudes? I don't I understand. I mean, my, I think I'm going to stick with my guess that it's, it's, it's men that are in power and have money and are used to, they well, get that all the time. And so this so is, yeah, there was a doc wouldn't last very long. <laughs> You're just like your average dude. Yeah. Just like just taking. Well, he, and if the average dude who gets punked account. by everybody and by his wife and yeah. everybody. <laughs> so already, I don't need to pay for this yeah. shit. He's already losing. Yeah. Hey, hey, already hey, get punked at hey, work and get punked at home. He's not yeah. married. These are single guys. Yeah. Yeah. So clearly, I'm living under a bridge because yeah, yeah. I was a pay If he was married, he'd be happy at home. Yeah. Free. This dude, this dude is like power, money. Everyone's afraid of me. He punks everybody else. You, I don't know because okay, so there was this show. I think it was on HBO called Real Sex. I think uh -huh. that's the one I saw 
where they'd go into like weird Boy, stuff. Well, these or, shows, I, I want to see your uh, your your cue. Bro, Real Sex is old. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, never watched yeah, Justin, watch Justin it. remembers yeah, that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah, the, 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 Taboo the, is another one. The of my sex favorites. Rooms was your last recommendation. No, that was on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> no, so they talked about um, you know, being dominated or being <laughs> submissive, or whatever. And a lot of it has to do with uh, how they deal with trauma. So people who've been uh, abused or whatever, it's like them getting control over this trauma mm. and it becomes sexually um, it yeah. becomes sexually satisfying because they can still get out of it. They still That's have a safe That's why I feel like planet. somehow like them growing up, they must have had that yes. like super negative uh, yes. you know, comments and feedback. That's what know? I think. Yeah. So that's, that's a good I guess. I mean, I, I could see that too. I could see somebody who like their mom, okay? It's like a mommy issue, right? Their mom punked the shit out of them and told them they were worthless and they're all this stuff like that. And so they're trying to gain control of it. Right, right. And mm -hmm. they got older and successful and did their own thing and now they try and get it and now they have control because they can pay and stop whenever they want. So they, they actually can stop Damn, the girl from saying dude, it. I don't know. That's messed up. Yeah, yeah, I think that's super wild. Anyway. You know what else I read? I read something uh, yesterday that I, I, I haven't fact-checked so maybe Doug can fact-check check me um tiktok is catching up to google on search wow are you serious yes wow i don't like TikTok. they were, i forgot what the percentages were but they were starting to say like even like restaurant reviews or something like that like it's become between certain age groups obviously uh that they rarely use google anymore they go to tiktok <clears throat> to find these things out how is it how, is how it, dumb well, it says nearly 40 percent of gen z users prefer using tiktok and instagram for internet searches over traditional oh google God. search I, well i don't trust tiktok just because i know that uh, it's controlled by china and they, they do change the algorithm for uh some countries versus their own and i i look i tell you what our own cia has done this other country so of course they're doing this i think that they're in there trying to manipulate you know, kids and you know, it's wild. I mean, I and looked into culture. that and I, to, to fact check it. And from what I know, it's from what I found, it's true Yeah, that what you, what you said, and I, I was blown away by, and I've told that to so many people since then. What I think is crazy is that I've told that to so many people and it's not changing anyone's they behaviors. They don't even care. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, like, it's, it's this weird, um, yeah, sense of like, uh, facts and, and, uh, being able to kind of like, uh, go back and, 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 and you utilize like all those um, ways that we used to make sure like it was valid information. Like I, I feel like like that whole uh, of thought process now is like being absolved right in front of us. Well, there was a just study that just came out uh, that says that social media, because social media hasn't been around long enough to really have lots of studies, been like a spe lots of speculation. But this new study shows that social media makes young people unhappy and negatively impacts their finances. So Dude, I mean, there's more and more evidence showing idiocracy. Yeah. Okay. I think I have. We're headed there. If not, we're there already. Yeah. What a, what a great Watch premise. that movie again. I, I, you never watched that? That's everybody's I, homework. That's, it does sound familiar. This guy goes in one of those cryo, cryo things or whatever and ends up waking up way later. He's just an everyday ravaged guy, but the world population yeah. continues to get he's dumber and dumber. He's a genius in that culture. So as soon as he wakes up, he's in the future and he's like a genius because everybody's so dumb. The president is a pro wrestler. Yeah, it's so <laughs> funny, dude. It's, yeah, you, dude. you know, it's funny about that. Off air, we were just talking about betting on the rock being the freaking oh, president. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a viable option. And nobody drinks water in the future. They all drink this drink called, was it Brando or something like that? Or <laughs> yeah. It's like this Powerade drink. Well, maybe I haven't They can't figure out why the plants are The legs got electrolytes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How old is it? How old is it? Oh, oh it's, it's old. It's old, but it's so on point, man. 2006. Like it's pretty. Oh wow, it is old. It's, it's like a cult classic. Like it never yeah. really got lots like of an Encino Man type of. That's what it sounds like. Well, it's it's kind of like Office Space, yeah. uh, kind of vibes. Yeah, because it, it was. I think Mike. His name is Mike Judge, the guy who did yeah. gave us some butthead. He wrote it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh really hey, do you want to talk about uh, you know going back? Did you hear that Toys R Us is coming back? Really? Remember they went bankrupt? Really? They're they're bringing it back. There's a there's a I think a mall. Uh, I want to say on the East Coast that they're going to have a Toys R Us, and apparently Toys R Us is going to make try and make a comeback. Who's it, cool? I, new, I was kind of bummed that they went new ownership, new CEO. Who's reviving? I don't know the it? Are, they, are they pivoting on what they were doing? That's a good question. I you know, know, I always it was crazy to me uh, to see them go under like that because I, I mean, Toys R Us as a kid, I remember being like one of the coolest places ever, and they were one of the first places to do this, which I thought was brilliant. Oh, it's Macy's is going to bring back. Oh, so it's Macy's uh, it, bottom out is going to is going to brand Toys R Us and bring it back to every store this holiday season. They're in store shops. Nice. Where they're going to be a thousand square feet in small locations, up to ten thousand square feet in large locations, where they're going to have little Toys R Uses. Why? Do you, what's your guys' opinion? Is it you think Amazon killed him? 
Yeah. You think yeah, Amazon killed sure. oh, KB yeah. Toys, Toys R Us, yep. like yep. all those little mini toy stores that were huge in the 80s for us? Dude, Toys yeah. R Us was a juggernaut. So was KB Toys. KB, KB Toys, Toys yeah. was like- That in was every, in every mall. Every mm -hmm. mall, yeah. KB Toys existed, and then Toys R Us was everywhere. Yep. And they completely went away. Is it was it Amazon that killed them? You think probably the competition was so was it had so, to be. Yeah, I, I you know now the reason why I think that they're bringing it back is the nostalgia, because you know they're going to bring it back, and I think uh, you're going to see like parents like us. I'm going to get excited if I see a Toys R Us. Well, do you guys remember? So Toys R Us did this. They were the first ones to do it, and I know I've seen other stores adopt it since then. But uh, for Christmas, you give your kid the little gun. And he could run around oh, the yeah. store and shoot the toys he wants, and then it builds uh, their market. Christmas list. That's yeah, right. that was smart. Oh, I thought that really was so smart. so brilliant yeah. because so every kid was so excited to go do that. When yeah. I was a kid, that was the greatest place ever. Yeah, there was a Toys R Us in San Jose over here. It was on Blossom Hill, and I'll never. I, I, rem I remember we drive by and I'd scream, "Ah, let me go!" To the, you know. And, no, we're not going in there. Yeah. And then the few times when they would turn in the parking lot, yeah, like I remember one year. I wanted a Nintendo. This is when NES first came out. And I wanted it so bad. It was expensive back then. My yeah. parents didn't, they mm -hmm. didn't have a ton of money. We were four kids or whatever. And I remember I cried because I wanted it so bad. <laughs> yeah. And I, th I think my dad felt bad or whatever. And we were driving and my dad just, he just turned into the parking lot and my heart's like jumping. Yeah. And I'm like, are we going to Toys R Us? Or are we going to Cost <laughs> yeah, Plus dude. next door? Which one are we going? <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> remember that? Yeah. Well, sure enough, we go inside the Toys R Us, and it was like the greatest thing ever. And he goes, show me the Nintendo you want. It was like the greatest thing of all time. I, remember, I, to I have mem fond memories of Toys R Us also. It's just, it was a great store. So it's crazy to think how another business like Amazon can co totally just rip the heart out. They, they need a new mascot, a stupid uh, giraffe, though. I, I, thought yeah, the, yeah. I thought the zebra-looking giraffe thing was cool. What? You know? yeah, the, Zebra-looking giraffe? Multicolored giraffe or whatever it was. Wait, are you thinking about the... Wasn't he like a multicolored giraffe? I think you're confusing think the gum, regular. the zebra gum. Yeah. Is oh, that I gum? might be. <laughs> uh, yeah. what you're is, confusing. What is, yeah, give me what the... You know what I'm talking about? Show yeah, me yeah, what yeah, the, yeah. the Toys R Us... Is. It's a giraffe, isn't it's it? It's just a giraffe. Oh, it's not I, like... It's a regular one. I think his name is Jeffrey. Yeah. Jeffrey. Uh, Wait you know, a second. Is Jeffrey really his name? Because that is a extremely popular child's chew toy now. You bet, I, You have to have Jeffrey. No, it's not Jeffrey. It's um, That is too Jeffrey. The no, chew, I thought it was something else. No, the giraffe chew toy that is huge and famous right I know now. what you're talking about, and I don't think it's Jeffrey. I think it's- uh, <laughs> Look up Jeffrey chew toy now. Oh, chew, okay. chew toy. No, Sorry. it's something Back else. The, the, it's, the, it's a girl's chew, name. Chew toy. No, dude. Okay, so I was wrong about that. Let's see if I'm wrong with this. Now, is it with a J or a G? No, put gi put giraffe chew toy for kids. Popular giraffe chew toy. It's named something else. It's like Sophie. It's Sophie. No. It's not Jeffrey. Maybe you guys named that. You're oh, bro, if I'm right on this one, you, that's it. It's <laughs> over. You're going to make up that's it. Wrong. Sophie. Sophie. Oh, my God, uh, Adam. It is Sophie. Yeah. Look at that. See what happened? I was wrong one time, yeah. and that's Wait a second. it. Yeah, Never that's, again. Maybe that's the female version. Where's the uh, male version? There is no <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know you chased the name for your kid. Here, I did, dude. That's why you think it that. It was Jeffrey. Hey, we got your son, Sophie. That's uh, Jeffrey now. Yeah, it's Jeffrey. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Here's Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey the toy. You also confused the. You thought you said multicolor. You're talking about the gum. Yeah, I am. With the zebra I on am, it. I that am. last. It was tasty, but it lasted yeah. 20 yeah, seconds. Yeah, fruit. Uh, fruit something. I forget what it's called. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, you're right. Fruit stripes or something like yes. that. You know what the, the toy store I always wanted to go to is you remember that movie Big with Tom Hanks? Yes. And then yeah. they went in and they jump on the. Isn't that in the Bay Area? Electric, no, that's in New uh, York. Yes, yeah, in New York. Uh, it's a so, famous toy store. What's yeah. the name of it? It still exists, if I'm not mistaken. I forget, but it's... Um, it's, like a, it's like a rich name. I was always it's like, why a, don't they have this? Like, I want to go to this place. Like, as a kid, that was like... I couldn't even believe that there's, like, those kind of toys and you could go around It's a famous toy store. Play with it all. That, there it is. Fruit oh, Stripe. Fruit Stripe. That, yes, that's exactly That right. gum that is lasted right. maybe yeah. 10 seconds it's, max. You, you chew the whole pack with a couple Oh, yeah. Might as well be Cheeklets. Yeah. <laughs> FAO Schwartz. Yes, That's it. FAO I knew it was like Schwartz. some weird, like, sound like it sounds like an investment firm. Hey, guys, know, you know, like or like a diamond store. Hedge fund, you know? Yeah. So what do you, okay, I'm really, I'm curious. Maybe you can find out if you looked up why why to Toys R Us went bankrupt because- They didn't make enough money. Well, obviously, right? <laughs> but I mean, it was so abrupt. Don't you remember? I mean, I, yeah. I it was like- Well, my kids were on the tail end. They like literally grew up going there and I took them there and it was like the same kind of cool experience. Oh. And then all of a sudden it was like- that year was gone. Well, according That's to the Motley Fool, because the company had a tremendous amount of debt due to a leveraged buyout used to take the company private, that stopped the retailer from investing in its stores at the time when demand faltered and major retailers. There you go. Uh, so it actually so, wasn't. Okay. Th that mm. makes way more sense. Now, so they I, actually went, which, by the way, is rarely successful, like what Elon was about to do with Twitter. Yeah. 
is is go rare. from public to private. Yeah, go public to private and then and then revive it is not commonly. You're not it's hard. It's, yeah, it's very. I re hard to I do. remember when Toys R Us went downhill. I remember when it went from this fun great place to like a ghetto. I'd go there and I'd be like, oh. I man. remember when it used to be like, like super clean and cool to go to. Then became like a real dirty toys out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I That's what that. I mean. I remember that trend. I'm sure it was right around this time. Well, I'm excited that they're going to come back. Can't wait to take my kid and have him get excited. So if Macy's know. owns them, yeah. then is it now back to being a publicly you know traded? Uh, stock them because it's under Macy's. Because Macy's, Macy's, Macy's it. Yeah, Macy's is. Uh, do they Macy's own it? it? I don't know. Yeah, that's what DeWalt. I sells. know they're going to be in Macy's, but I don't know if Macy's owns the deal or what the deal. Oh, is. oh it's I a think. it's a partnership, so I don't think they own it. Interesting. Oh, they probably got a really good deal on it then if it's gone bankrupt, right? I imagine they got got it for pennies on the dollar for its name. Mm. Yeah. So interesting. That's really cool. Hey, real quick, got to check out a company we've been working with for a very long time, Organifi. They have high quality ingredients, convenience, great tasting. They have superfood blends that make it easy and enjoyable to add more variety, nutrition to your day. They have green juices, gold juices, red juices. And then in this episode, you hear me talking about their plant protein powder where they combine multiple sources of protein to give you a beneficial amino acid profile. So for those of you that are intolerant to dairy or get digestive issues with other proteins, this one's pretty easy to digest. It's high in protein, tastes great. You got to check this company out. Head over to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump and use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Sarah from Massachusetts. Hey, Sarah, thanks for calling in. How can we help you? Hey, thanks for having me. You got it. I am actually a very new listener. I only um, found your podcast two weeks ago. One of my own clients actually recommended it. So I've been really trying to catch up on um, the episodes, but there's a lot. So <laughs> welcome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I do have a question about supplements, actually. Um, so I am a personal trainer and a nutrition coach, and I recently started my own cut just a couple months ago after being at around maintenance for five years. So um, I started seeing really great results after using a couple different fat burners, um, the Legion fat burner and a Yohimbean, a Yohimbean supplement. Um, and then more recently I started taking ephedrine. And so I was curious what kind of supplements, um, like these have, um, side effects that should be aware, I should be aware of, um, do they require cycling off of to remain efficient and effective? Um, and what your thoughts are on those? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, first off, thanks for listening to the show. Let's talk a little bit about fat burners, quote unquote, and what they actually do in the body. So, Yohimbi, um, ephedra, uh, caffeine can even be put kind of loosely in this category. Siniferin is another compound that probably can be put in this category. These are all very strong central nervous system stimulants. And uh, what they do is they dramatically increase the production of what are called catecholamines. So epinephrine, norepinephrine, uh, maybe even adrenaline, spike in cortisol. These give you lots of energy, so you get hyped. They're appetite suppressing, uh, so you probably want to eat less. What are the side effects of that? Well, it's a stress response in the body. Um, so you are increasing the amount of stress that you're producing in your body kind of artificially. Not necessarily, actually for the most part, not really a good thing. And then the adaptation that happens to them is actually quite rapid. So what happens is the receptors um, that these chemicals interact with start to downregulate, meaning they essentially will shut down and shut off. And this is why... I'll use caffeine as an example because that's much more widely consumed. This is why when you first start drinking coffee, one espresso gets you jazzed and you feel amazing all day long. And then soon you realize you need two espressos and then three. And then now you need them just to feel normal. So whatever effects you get from the stimulant effects to the appetite suppressing effects, they're quite short lived. And then you experience what's called a rebound. Um, so you go through a period of, okay, now I need them just to kind of feel normal. If I don't take them, I feel terrible. And then when you go off, your body has to go through a process of upregulating its receptors again and getting back to normal. And that can take uh, a little while. It could take as long as a month uh, in some cases. And what happens in that month is you have lower energy. Some people feel depressed um, and the appetite and cravings go up. So what's the net effect of this? Doesn't, doesn't help. Doesn't work. Now, if I did a, a, a six-week study... I might show some weight loss because of the appetite suppressing effects. That's mainly what's happening. I don't like the term fat burner. It's not really burning fat. Whatever thermogenic effect these has have on the body is minimal. 
Um, really, it's the appetite suppressing effects is where you see the, I the would argue, loss. But. I would argue that it's not that. I don't think that's the most beneficial. I think it's the natural increase of neat that people don't realize. I mean, it, and you, it's this is a real simple test. Like, have you ever noticed yourself uh, on a day? And I don't know if you're a caffeine or coffee drinker or whatever like that. Uh, when you have your coffee versus when you don't. Like, uh, so I have a drive, right? And there's times where oh, I didn't, I forgot to turn the coffee maker on, and so I've got this 45 hour drive, and I'm Minute. almost falling asleep. Feels sleep. like 45 yeah, hours. Did I say 45 hours? You did. Like oh, I think when you don't have caffeine, <laughs> it feels yeah, like 45. It does hours. feel like 45 <laughs> hours. So I have a 45 minute drive when I'm driving. Uh, I'm almost like falling asleep. I'm so tired. I'm barely moving. If I have my coffee, I've got music on. I'm tapping my finger. I'm tapping my foot. Like I'm moving around. I'm alert. Like that. That's neat. And when you when you when you're stimulated like that all day, you you are burning more calories uh, just from that, and that adds up. And I think that is what we see on those studies that it's, show it's all of it. I mean, because it does suppress appetite you'll, in a short period, but it, it wears off. You've probably already noticed this by taking them. You, you, the effects wear off, and then the rebound sucks. And what happens with the rebound is the rebound. It's like you're. It's you know, if you're above baseline, and then your body adapts, and then you're out baseline. And then when you go off, you're below baseline. And the net effect, meaning the long term effect, is zero. Mm -hmm. And and I'll even say this: over time, this messes with your hormones. It messes with your stress response. You get this uh, imbalance in your HPA ax, you know, axis, um, you know, your hypothalamus, your pituitary, your adrenals, even your thyroid can be thrown off uh, from taking lots of these stimulants over long periods of time. Now, you know, short bouts, like once a week, I take ephedra to give me some energy or whatever, or I'm going to go to a party tonight. I need some energy. Let me throw some Yohimbi and Yohim, you know, and ephedra together. Um, to enjoy it, whatever. Like you could do that, probably going to be okay so long as it's appropriate for you. Because remember, they are stimulants, and some people they're not appropriate. You will see in some cases increased risks of cardiovascular um, insults, like stroke or heart attack. Not to freak anybody out, you're probably okay because you're young. But as fat burners themselves, not effective, uh, not in the long term at all. It may be in a six week period, but then you get a rebound and come back. And I've only seen over time negative, net negative effects from taking them. And now this is coming from someone, and you haven't listened to the show very long, so I'll give you a little background. The three of us have been in fitness for well over two decades. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, ephedra, the ECA stack was like, I mean, it was, you could buy it anywhere. And we worked in gyms and we worked long hours and I would take, you know, speed stack drinks, yeah. they called them, or rip force. And we'd pound them all day long. And let me tell you, that's, it was, it, Productivity see, through the roof. <laughs> that's about yeah. Yeah. But then the negative, right? The, the when, when you crash Big or whatever. Negative after that. Yeah. yeah. You know what they? By the way, do you know what what you what people can take ephedra and turn into? You know what they can they can make out of that? Yeah. Yeah, methamphetamine, yeah, crystal meth. So, um, so just to give you an idea of where it comes from. So, I, I don't I, I don't recommend these fat burners to anybody ever. Yeah. Now, if you're if you're like me and you're a supplement, you know, fiend, and you like to play around, and have fun with them every once in a while, yeah, I'll mess with them. But I don't recommend them. Not for fat burning. Definitely not. Yeah. So then in terms of supplements that are effective, like creatine or protein powder, yep. how do you toe that line of recommending supplements that you know are really effective and scientifically backed to your clients um, when that kind of, you know, might be out of scope and something that I try to avoid doing, but um, when they are effective, how do I share that there's, appropriately? There's a hierarchy. I mean, uh, creatine is amazing. Uh, so is protein. First of all, with protein powder, I'm always telling a client that we want to try and get our protein intake through whole foods. That's the goal always. So don't ever think, and, th and this is something you have to communicate to clients because for with the great marketing that supplement companies have done, they've convinced people to think that protein powder, you, when you want to lose weight or you want to get in shape, you go buy a protein powder. Like there's something in the protein powder that helps us get in shape. It's like just great marketing. And the truth is, no, we don't want to have to take a protein shake. My goal is that you eat enough protein through your whole foods. But if you don't, this is a great alternative. So if you if you have a hard time hitting your targets, then absolutely we want to utilize something right. like that. And that's how I recommend that. As far as creatine, because it is the, the most studied and best performance supplement that's out there, 
I still am going to tell my client there's a hierarchy to that. If you are not hitting your protein intake every day and you're inconsistent with your diet and you're inconsistent with your weightlifting routine, yeah, why take creatine? Why waste our money on uh, on creatine? But if you're being very consistent with your training, you hit your protein intake and your your calorie macros on a, on a regular basis, then hell yeah, if you want to play with creatine, let's do it. It's a relatively cheap supplement that is probably the most effective performance supplement on the market. So why not? And now we're starting to attach it to a lot of health benefits. So I'm super proud. Yeah, of there's that. one population I would recommend creatine to no matter what. Those yeah, are vegans. vegans. Yeah. yeah, vegans because they don't get any in their diet, and studies show that they get some pretty good cognitive and health boosts um, from supplementing with creatine. And then along those lines, what you said, you know, supplementing with a nutrient that your body's lacking, it can be a game changer. But I always would defer that to a somebody that I work with. So I would say something like, "Hey, you know, Mrs. Johnson, I work with a functional medicine practitioner." They do hair hair sample tests to see if you're lacking any minerals. Um, I think this might benefit you. This is the person I like to work with. I'd like you to work, uh, you know, if you're interested, I can refer you. And then you can do these tests to see if there's anything that you specifically need to take yourself. By the way, we have a forum on Facebook. So you haven't been listening very long, but this is a free forum. And I think you would you would get gain tremendous value from. It's called MP Holistic Health on Facebook. Go there. Join the forum. It's functional medicine practitioners run it. They give talks on there. They answer questions. Um, I think you'll get huge value as a trainer from from going there. I will. Thank you. No problem. And since you're a new trainer, um, let me send you a program that I think will that you'll benefit from uh, with your clients. Prime called, Prime Pro. Yeah, Maps Prime and Maps Prime Pro. They're correctional exercise based, and they'll benefit pretty much any client you have. So I'm going to send those over to you for free. Okay. Thank you so much. I was looking at your programs and there's so many and I really wasn't sure like which one would be right. So thank you. That's it, Sarah. And I appreciate you listening. Hope you stick around. Hope Adam yeah. doesn't annoy the crap out of you. <laughs> I will. I have been listening to like three episodes a day. So yeah. Oh, wow. That's I'm great. I'm trying. Okay, you really <laughs> trying do. to make up You'll for lost time. Yeah. You really do like us. Okay, yeah. I believe you now. Cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. You got it. Yeah, I like those kinds of questions because she hasn't been listening long enough to hear our stances. It's on those. fresh. Yeah, yeah it gives me an opportunity to talk about those. Yeah, I know. It's it's interesting to hear like the perspective of somebody just kind of dropping in of what we've talked about for years. But um, it's good. It's because it, it brings you back to reality of like yep. you know how powerful the marketing is behind a lot of these products, and um, you know your average person just um, you know buys into it because it and, makes a lot of sense. And these 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 fat burners, these CNS stimulants, especially ephedra, when you combine it with aspirin and caffeine it's also got like a drug-like uh euphoric energy effect yeah. like i had people who took them they didn't care about fat loss they didn't care about working out they took them a couple times like i love these yeah. i take these in the morning help me clean the house or when i hang out with my friends or whatever it, it, so they feel good. They they can be fun in the short term, and so they've got these kind of addictive properties. That's why they got so popular. Well, yeah, and that's I mean that was something I was going to bring up, but it's mainly why I like caffeine so much is because of the cognitive benefits of it, and mm. and for me to to feel like you know I can I can accomplish more, and I, I'm I'm more prepared for for my daily tasks, and so but I do have to cycle through that and make sure that you know when it's up real high, it has less effect to it. So. But in terms of like fat loss and all that kind of stuff, like the the big rocks and the big movers where you're going to stay. I love that she asked about the protein and creatine because I, I really think those are the two main supplements that yeah, I, most often right that, that I utilize yeah. with clients. They, they made the most sense for most of the the people that I was I was training. All the rest of the stuff that's out there, unless you do exactly what you said, Sal, which is. Which I, you know, we, we she probably hasn't heard us communicate it. There is tremendous value in supplementing for something you are deficient in. Yep. So if you don't have enough vitamin D or you lack in magnesium, which by the way, those two are super common in people, sure. right? So if find out if you are somebody who you know lacks vitamin D or magnesium, and supplementing for that will be more powerful than any of these supplements that we're talking about towards your fat loss goal or muscle Just building health. Goal. Yeah. And overall health. Right. So balancing that out, I think has lots of value, but randomly taking all these supplements, like we've mm -hmm. addressed some, you know, branch to chain amino acid conversation, fat burner conversation. Oh man, that was the yeah. and liver, liver it was like supplement day to day. Yeah, it is supplement day to day. Yeah. And it's just it, the same thing rings true. We've been saying forever. It's like one, you go after all of it. You possibly can't whole foods. The next step after that is to figure out where 
you're potentially deficient in. If you're going to supplement, supplement there. And then if you have disposable income and you want to play with these performance supplements and you don't you don't mind throwing a couple hundred bucks a month at it, then then fine. Then yeah. you can do that. You know, Ephedra was um, it, it does have medical applications. It was been used in Chinese medicine as a bronchodilator. Uh, so they'd use it for asthma. Mm. And it was sold, obviously, Sudafed. It's Sudafedrin uh, as a decongestant. That's how it got discovered. It got discovered because some bodybuilders took some Chinese ma huang, which contains ephedra, and they're like, hey, I feel hype. <laughs> yeah. Let me put this in a drink and sell it. And they did, and it, and, and that's that was a huge yeah, market after it. until it got banned. Our next caller is Audrey from New Mexico. Audrey, what's happening? How can we help you? I, um, so uh, obviously my name's Audrey. I am 22. In the email, I said I'm 23. Uh, I messed that up, though. <laughs> So I'm a licensed medical massage therapist. I work on, on veterans. I've been doing that for about two years now. And my question is, how do I adjust my training to better prevent me from feeling so strained at work? When I'm working on a client, my, uh, my hand goes numb sometimes or my foot will go numb. And I've been doing, I've been exercising for about five years now. I ran through MAPS power lift and I got my deadlift up to... Um, to 315, which is pretty cool. Whoa. I had apps anabolic. I just started the, the six pack apps, but I was sore for like, like a week. So I kind of backed off of that a little bit. <clears throat> and I'd done most of maps aesthetic. I didn't do the last phase just because I just got married last month and then like a ton of stuff happened. So I was just, my question was, how do I, you know, adjust my training so I don't feel so strained after work or at or at work and I've had a hamstring injury in the past and I felt like that had to do with my hamstring you know being overstretched because I just I'm bending over the the whole time I'm at work so what do you guys think yeah good question you know I I used to own a wellness studio and in that studio I had a massage therapist that she worked that I worked with for almost 10 years and she was excellent her name was Devin she was very very good and she would massage Sometimes seven people a day, uh, which is a lot for massage. And you know this. How many how many people would do you work on, on on a regular basis, by the way, in a day? Right now I'm doing about five. Um, but I'm only I was working five days a week, but I'm down to three just because it was it was too much for me. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know this, but the the amount of stress and strain it places on the hands, the wrists. And the shoulders, uh, when you're working on people, is tremendous. What do you mean? A lot of people don't know this. You ever try to massage your partner before for longer than thirty minutes? <laughs> I know. Well, after like <laughs> yeah, two minutes, it's just, and, yeah. they're not super aware. Anyone who's really ever motivated for something anybody else. who's ever massaged their wife or partner before, they get about fifteen minutes in, they want to quit. Tired. I know. <laughs> now, sure, now the, the reason why I brought up the therapist that I worked with is because she, her technique was so good that she never felt uh, a lot of these strains. So what she didn't do is she didn't use a lot of her hands. She used a lot of her elbow, would position her body weight behind it, would use her body weight. And she utilized techniques that allowed her to, to do that work without hurting herself. So that's the first thing I would say is look at your technique. See if you can adjust your technique in ways that is going to not uh, put that wear and tear on your body. Now, as far as your workouts are concerned, you're going to have to reduce the intensity and the volume of your training yeah. because massage – even if you have good technique, is a lot of work. So you're going to have to cut that back because you're already doing a lot of strenuous work um, uh, when you, what you're doing. And then I would place a focus on hand, wrist, and shoulder mobility. Okay, so we have a program called MAPS Prime Pro, and you'll find hand, wrist, and shoulder mobility in there. And I think that would be good for you to practice before and after you work on uh, your clients to really help your body move in ways where you can have a little bit more longevity and maybe not so much so much pain. Yeah, Audrey, how long have you been a massage therapist? Uh, for about two years now. Okay. Yeah, that, your 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 point actually sounds really good about technique. Um, that's one of the things that Katrina would always say. She could tell uh, a new therapist versus an advanced therapist is how well they are at their leveraging, leveraging their body. angles. Yeah, yeah, because you beat your body up if you don't. Yeah, because oh, it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's super physically demanding. But I agree. I mean, if you're if you're deadlifting three fifteen, I know you have an Strength ability there. to get after your workouts. So I that would be my clear indicator that you are not afraid of an intense hard workout and I probably would have to coach you to scale back that's mm -hmm. what just that that's what I've put together in the short time that we've been talking so that would be my answer is like hey maybe scale back to two workouts a week and you know do a full body routine and maybe even back off some of the intensity and the mobility um, work and, yeah, yeah. Uh, Audrey do you get massaged 
no, I haven't in a while. Oh, uh, well, you yeah. know the value of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's funny working with massage therapists. Uh, I... I didn't realize how many massage therapists didn't get massage themselves when they themselves would benefit tremendously. So I don't know if you could do a trade with another massage therapist or something, but I, I think that would also help you quite a bit. Getting great, your great advice, getting your forearms worked on and uh, getting your neck and your shoulder worked on. Um, and probably even your hips getting worked on would probably help you a lot because I, I'm, I'm, you know, the, the positions that you get in and the way you use your hands up, you need to get those muscles worked out uh, because they can get real tight and they'll stay tight um, and you'll lose circulation and start to feel kind of some of the stuff you're feeling. I don't think I've ever talked about it on the show before, but that was actually a crucial part of the success I had during competing years. I was getting a massage every week. Mm -hmm. And if I was not doing, and I see the difference now because I don't get that anymore of how crucial yeah. my mobility work is now. If I like, I could get away with doing less mobility because I was consistently getting massaged. Yep. Uh, with all that training, uh, but now I'm not getting that the, the massage every single week. I see that I have to do my mobility work, or my joints are constantly talking to me. Yeah. Do you have Maps Prime Pro? I no, I don't. Okay, I'll send that to you. Okay, and then do that. Look at the hand, wrist, and shoulder mobility stuff in there. And I would. Okay, I don't. I don't have any issues with um my wrists or hands like that. Feels perfectly fine. It's just my my back sometimes. Okay. Well, I would go through the program and I would look then at hip uh, mobility because that mm -hmm. might be contributing to your back. Didn't you say your hand goes a little numb though? Oh yeah. My hand will go numb, but it feels like it's more my shoulder than yeah. anything else. Okay. That's why I said shoulder mobility too. Okay. So I, I, okay. So I would go shoulder and I would look at hip mobility and work through the program and the intent is very important. So make sure you watch the video and follow the cues. Don't just do the movements. You have to follow the cues. It'll make a big difference. Okay. All right. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Thank you. You got it. Yeah. I, you know, I, that was such a, uh, I learned so much through working with a really good massage therapist because, and, and the reason why I did it is because I saw the value in my clients. Mm -hmm. I'd never worked with a therapist that was really good. You know, there's a spa massage, but there's some value in that, but then there's like correctional massage Yeah. and she was so good. I would see such dramatic changes in my clients. And then I had, I would have her work on me sometimes and her technique was incredible. Like she, the way she would leverage her body and position herself, she would use her body weight. So she didn't have to use so much strength in, in her hands and her shoulders, which that'll beat you up for five hours a day is that'll crush you. It's very helpful too, to unlock it. You know, it, so if, if mobility is a struggle, especially, and that was always a hard sell for me, it is to get people to consistently do mobility. Yeah. And so, yeah, sometimes I would refer to a massage therapist just to get that circulation going in, to get that uh, access again and, and to, uh, you know, move and function properly again, you know, around the joints. So, uh, I, I definitely found it very, very valuable uh, uh, to do that in conjunction with mobility. Yeah, it's really uh, valuable, but it's important to make the point or make sure people understand the difference between a Swedish massage and a sports massage. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So a sports massage is corrective, where a Swedish massage is more meditative and relaxing. Both right. have benefits. Yep. Okay. So if you are the person who just needs to decompress, yeah, a sports like massage can be stressful. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it'll be, I mean, I, a lot you of times, yeah, yeah, a lot of times I'm wincing a little bit and it's, it's, it's a, the first, it took me a while to get comfortable getting a sports massage. Yeah. I remember the first time I was like, Oh God, that's rough. I don't know if I want to do this. When I first started getting massage, I leaned towards a Swedish massage because I felt it was more relaxing, but I found I got way more benefit from a sports massage and that's what I needed. Mm -hmm. So different types for different things that you're trying to get. If you're trying to get something that is corrective, then they have tremendous benefit. And then if you can also incorporate some of the mobility stuff from Prime Pro, you're really winning. Our next caller is Heather from Idaho. Hi, Heather. How are you doing? Thanks for calling in. Hi, you guys. I'm doing really well. Thanks for taking my question. I'm kind of a little bit starstruck. You guys have been um, so helpful, and I just admire a ton that you do. So thanks. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, I actually had a couple of questions, if that's okay. Um, the first one that I wanted to ask you is a trainer question. Um, so I have a lady that I train, and uh, she's she's got some joint issues. She uh, was in a car wreck accident a while ago, and so she um, she has both her hip and her knee are both messed up. So what I've been doing with her is the um, Zone Three Prime. Uh, I just do the 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 strength ones. Um, Fortification workouts. 
Yes, thank you. <laughs> I do the fortification ones, and then we also do the stretches. Uh, but I was kind of wondering where I should take her next. She actually had foot surgery, so I don't have her for a couple of weeks. But I was, I was just kind of wondering what your suggestions were, where where I should go. She's also, she really needs to lose a, quite a bit of weight. Um, so that's that's a priority too. Mm -hmm. I, Map starter. I think Map starter would be a good a, a good oh. place to start with. Yeah, it's a lot of physio ball. Um, exercises. It's great strength training. Um, and based off of what I'm reading here and also what you said, I think that would be more appropriate than having to modify a program like MAPS Anabolic. Well, then I would go to symmetry actually. So I go starter symmetry oh. before anabolic. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Do you have, do you have either one of those? Um, I don't, uh, they're both on my list of what to buy next. We'll send them to you. Uh, so Thank you. Yeah, you, yeah <laughs> that's you, super nice. Yeah, no problem. We'll send them over to you, so you'll have them both. But I would, I would go starter because, based off what you're saying, I think anabolic. I mean, you can definitely modify anabolic, but it would require a lot of a lot of modifications on your part, which is probably okay. But I just think starter. The, we we wrote it, and it's the way we wrote it. I think it's much more appropriate. Yeah, it just addresses a lot of stability issues, like specifically. And so, yeah, I think that would be the perfect place to kind of lead and direct. Yeah, that's kind of a duh. When you first said that, I was like, oh, yeah, why? But yeah, okay, that's a great idea. Thank you no problem. very much. Okay, I'm not quite as nervous now. I was super nervous because I listen to you guys so much and I just uh, think you're super smart. We're not, so. that, we're not that cool. So yeah, don't worry. If you meet us in person, yeah. hey, you'll, speak, be, hey, speak for yourself, you'll huh? be underwhelmed. <laughs> These are all characters we're portraying. It's like really awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't remember ever, like in a job interview or anything, ever being this nervous. I was kind of, I kind of felt good for a minute. But. Okay, a little bit less nervous. My other question was for me, um, and this is something that I've been kind of working with. I, I think I put in the email three months, but it's actually been a lot longer than that because uh, I pull muscles like around my SI joint, around my left SI joint mm. quite often. Um, and it's it's always, always when I'm deadlifting. And uh, so... I went through, um, I found you guys, when I first found you guys about a year and a half ago, I was the typical like uh, high stress, pound pound my body pretty hard, you know? Um, and so I immediately went to aesthetic um, and really I wasn't super consistent with that, but then I went to performance and I was consistent with that and I felt great. I felt really good. Um, and I really, I added in like the uh, hyperextension, um, and a couple of just uh, like getting pump days in my glutes, trying to strengthen my glute meat, my glute max and my piriformis because I know those are weak. Um, and then I, I felt really good and I went to strong to really try and build that posterior chain. And uh, in my third week of phase three, which was last week, I, I pulled that again. I pulled whatever muscle I keep pulling by my SI joint. And so I was, uh, that's actually when I when I wrote this question, I was super frustrated and was like, "Why the heck does this keep happening?" So yeah, so I hit the QL email. Related? Yeah, it sounds QL. Do you, do you are you familiar with the QL, the quadratus lumborum? Okay, so can you can you do a windmill? Okay, yeah, windmill. Um, I'm better at them. Uh, I I really. So in performance, uh, I, I think it's phase two. There's the strength row where you use the kettlebell and you kind of rotate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Th that one I really felt. Um, like I could feel that I was weak in those areas and I assume that was the, the QL, uh, and that one helped a lot. That was one of, one of my favorite ones. Okay. Um, well, from I, that. I like windmills, uh, for you. Windmills uh, and Turkish get-ups. Turkish get-ups I would make windmills. those, I would Turkish make those, oh, okay. those two movements. Yeah. I would try and get really proficient at them. I mean, forget our programming. I would, that would become like a two staple movements that and think of it like getting getting good at it versus like programming it to necessarily get just practice them yeah get practice and getting really really good yeah. at the movement now i now because we're giving you symmetry i think you should follow that program too yeah i yeah. think map symmetry follow the whole program mm -hmm. i think that's going to be very likely to solve your your discrepancy between your right and left it's it's one side right that that you're constantly pulling mm -hmm. yeah it's always the left yeah. yeah go go through map symmetry go through map symmetry uh, we tell you this in the program, but I'll tell you now too on the show. Uh, start with your weak side. Allow the weak side to dictate what the strong side does. So if you only do five reps on the left side, that's what you're going to do on the right. Don't do more. Allow your body to balance out. You have a left to right imbalance. Uh, so it's asymmet asymmetrical. So symmetry will address that. And then practice windmills, and I think you'll be okay. 
Great. Like Thank those. you so much. Hey, I put in my question too. I don't know if you guys read um, read down below, but I know you've talked a little bit about archery, elk hunting, and things. And you guys have been you guys have been so great to help me as a as a newer trainer. Um, like I've avoided so many mistakes, and I've been able to help a wide variety of people because anytime I come across something, I just go back and look at you guys' past episodes. Um, so I really appreciated you. My my son listens to you guys a lot. Yeah. Uh, I included his Instagram, but we do quite a bit of archery elk hunting. If you ever want to come out to Idaho, we're not that far from Park City. So oh wow. cool yeah that sounds cool. We actually we have pla we actually it. have places in Idaho, so we have to come out that way. Oh, do you really? Yeah, yeah, Meridian. So we have a couple in Meridian oh. and Boise. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're more eastern than that. Okay, um, we're kind of the southeastern part, but. Uh, if you jump on his Instagram, you'll he puts quite a bit of stuff on there that he hunts. He's by far the better one out of Perfect. out of all of us, the more successful one. But but well, there I, is nothing in the whole world like a screaming bull like ten yards away from you. That's, <laughs> that sounds terrifying. <laughs> We're super <laughs> noobs, so yeah, that sounds really scary. The, the <laughs> uh, uh, well, well, uh, email send that uh, the like how to contact you to the person that you emailed your question to. I appreciate the invitation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very okay, much, Heather. Absolutely. Thank you, Heather. Thanks, you guys, so much. You got yeah, it. Have a good day. I don't know, man. A screaming bull running at me. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like I think, it. Yeah, I think she meant the rush, right? right? Yeah. I do want to. I do oh. want to uh, tell our audience that she did say something that um, I, I don't know if I've brought up on the show lately that I feel like we we should try and be better about rem reminding our audience. So we have created so much uh, free content on YouTube and through this podcast that you literally can go to YouTube or even Google and put in mind pump and then the question that you have and we'll probably have some. and we'll probably have maybe even multiple episodes or even white papers that have been written on that and you know we've gotten to a place now uh, growth wise where i know that all three of us cannot reach all of our dms anymore we prided ourselves on that early on that we answered every question it's impossible today so before you even slide in a DM and ask a question like that, because I find myself when I'm trying to answer those, at least 80% of them could have been solved by that person literally just Google searching the word mind pump and then their question mm -hmm. uh, or going to YouTube and doing that. And we already have their answer for them. So make sure you guys Very good do that. Point. I do want to touch on the, the asymmetry aspect. If, if you're somebody that constantly hurts one side, like it's one side of your body that you always pull and it's really frustrating. Going through and training unilaterally for you know two or three months, not always, but often it's game changer. Often will solve the issue. And Map Symmetry is a program that does that. But even if you do it on your own, train uh, unilaterally for like exclusively for a couple months. Oftentimes, you'll find the issue and solve it. It's kind of crazy that we took as long as we did to write that program because. It's such a need. It is such a need. I mean, I, I've, I've since we've written it, I don't know how many times it's already been recommended to people that are calling in because many times that's mm -hmm. that's the thing. I finally even got Courtney's doing it now and finding all kinds of things out about her body that was like it should have been addressed a long time ago. Oh, Katr like, ah. Katrina ran it too. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. So no, it's I, it's funny that we took as long as we did to to write that one because I think it does. It's going to help a, a tremendous amount of people. Our next caller is Roxanne from Florida. Roxanne, thanks for calling in. How can we help you? Hey, Sal. How are you guys doing today? We're doing good. We're good. Um, well, I'm going to start off the traditional way, but um, I want to say how much I want to thank you guys. And you guys are doing such great work out there, debunking a lot of myths and really helping people's lives and careers and being vulnerable and putting your lives out there. So got to say thanks to your wives out there as well. Thank you. Um, my question is, uh, you see a lot of health stuff out there in regards to metabolism and hormones, and luckily all that's pretty mainstream now, but part one of my question is, what, is there any truth to a specific type of workout based on your hormone type that's out there? And of course, they have questionnaires where they are asking all about your hormones. And the reason why I'm asking to give you guys some context is, I, um, well, I grew up as a... Um, I would say an endurance athlete. I played soccer and I danced my whole life and then kind of dabbled into gym workouts and things like that after college um, and a little bit afterwards. Uh, but I did have a pituitary tumor in 2011, which I had removed. Ever since then, my hormones have been kind of messed up. I don't produce FSH and LH, which is follicle st stimulating hormone and LH. So I don't menstruate anymore. Um, and that also affects my progesterone and estrogen. Um, 
I've gone through a lot of different type of workouts in the past, um, and I've had some setbacks. In 2020, I broke my back. I broke my L3, so that took some time to recover. Uh, last year, 2021, I did a lot of fertility treatment. I spent the year trying to do fertility treatment, which was not successful. And most recently, I finished MAPS Anabolic. So with that in mind, and ask any questions you may have, um, I'm kind of confused on what kind of workout I need to do next. Do I do another round of MAPS Anabolic? Do I need to change my workouts depending on my hormone type or the fact that I'm in a perpetual uh, menopause is what my doctors like to call it. Yeah, yeah, no, really good question. First off, great book in the background there. I think I recognize that one <laughs> <laughs> right behind you. Oh my. Yeah. Don't act like oh, you don't act like you uh, do that on purpose. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm doing my research. I, I'm doing yeah. research. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Okay, so look, um, so of, there's so many factors to consider when designing a workout for an individual that saying um this is a workout for this hormone profile or this is a workout just for women or whatever, that really doesn't narrow it down very much. I like writing programs for goals, but even that it doesn't really tell us nearly the whole story. The most effective thing you could do, Roxanne, when it comes to a workout is it, forget our program. We have great programs, but we do write them for general audience. The best thing you could do is hire a really good and really experienced trainer who can individualize your workout because here's what you need to consider. Are hormones something you need to consider? Well, of course, but so is your perceived effort and how you feel. So is what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy. So is... How is your body moving? So is uh, is your strength improving? Is your appetite changing? How's your libido? Like all the, and more, right? All of these factors are what would help me design a workout and on the fly change it if I needed to, to give a client the best workout for them. So could I design a workout based off of someone's just hormone profile? I mean, kind of generally, maybe, but I really, what this is, is this is really the attempt at, for people to market a product to really make people feel like they're going to get some special individualized workout. Like take this, like it's really, it's no different. Not saying that it's, this is as valuable. I think hormone pro metabolic testing is more valuable than this, but it's no different than those tests you see on Facebook or, or Instagram where it says what your favorite color says about your personality or whatever. And so you're like, Oh my God, I want to know about that. So uh, well, there, I, there's some there's some val the reason why they can get away with this is because it, there is some truth. It is rooted in some truth, right? Like, you know that if you are training somebody who has adrenal fatigue and their hormones are out of balance or a thyroid condition, what are you not doing to them? You're not going to hammer the intensity, right? Sure. You're not going to put them on like hard, stressful type of training routine. You're not going to run them into the ground cardiovascular wise because of their their hormone profile. So there is some truth to this idea, but it is, they, they've taken a little bit of that truth and they've ran with it to market it and sell you something. And the real truth is what Sal is saying is that you really want this professional who can be asking you questions as you're going through your training routine saying like, how do you feel? How did you sleep last night? You know, how did you recover from our last workout? Oh, that was rough. Oh, you didn't sleep very good. Okay, let me modify this. Let me change this on the fly. And so that is way more valuable than some generic, oh, uh, put all these questions in and then it spits off a, a, a routine off of that. And I'm telling you what it's probably going to be is like based off of some of the things that you say or they find out hormonally from you, it's going to be a lower intensity routine versus like a higher intensity routine. Yeah, something like that. I mean, to give you an example, like let's say I had a client who for whatever reason we do some testing like this and I'm like, oh man, the, the ideal form of cardio for this person is running. And then I tell them, hey, if you run, that's the best form of cardio. Like I hate running. I hate running. I'd rather swim. And I'm like, well, you can get 15% better results by running. But guess which one I'm going to recommend? Swimming, because that's the one they like. And there's also value in doing things that you enjoy and the consistency that comes along with it. So I guess that the short answer is if you if you can find a good trainer, which really find someone who's experienced, who's been doing it for like eight years or more, somebody that you connect with, that's that does an assessment, listens to you, watches you, doesn't overtrain you and beat the crap out of you. That person is going to give you the best workout. And what you'll find when you work with them is they'll be able to change your workout as your body changes and as things improve or change or your sleep changes or whatever. They'll be able to change the workout and individualize it for you. Nothing's going to beat that. No workout program that we write for the general audience will beat that. And definitely no program that's based off of a you know hormone metabolic type is going to beat something like that. Okay. So you guys wouldn't suggest that I, you know, having the personal trainer is good. And I forgot to mention this, but I do like to do some cardio just for 
mental capacity and health as well. So I do a lot of walking, um, sometimes a run jog. And I know that you guys came out with MAPS Cardio recently. Is Since I grew up doing more so endurance workouts mm-hmm. and not as much resistance training, do you think I should incorporate something like that into my routine? Let's say if I don't go with a personal trainer, maybe try to do something like that. Well, I got, yeah, I got more questions for that then. So um, I'm assuming you're supplementing with um, some hormones to make up the difference because you said your luteinizing hormone and your follicle stimulating hormone don't exist. So are you taking progesterone and estrogen? You're on hormone replacement therapy? So I was, um, but I just got back from honeymoon in Italy and uh, I actually forgot. They want me on birth control. And honestly, after listening to a lot of the hormone doctors out there, like I really don't want to be on birth control. So I'm trying to find somebody else. Maybe there's another option that I can have other than going on birth control for the rest of my life until I hit menopause. Um, but I'm not sure if that's an option yet. So okay. I, I really honestly I, I, have to. I'm going to stay in my lane here. So I'm going to recommend you to people that we refer to in this situations like this. So we have a forum on Facebook called MP Holistic Health. It's run by Dr. Cabral and his team. They're functional medicine practitioners. They're really, really good. And they're always trying to, their goal is always trying to get your body where is going to be optimal without having to use pharmaceuticals or hormones. Now that doesn't mean that those aren't options. If they have to be, then they are but they're exceptionally good. So go on that form. It's totally free. And then if you want, you can contact them and, and try some testing. Another person you can look up is Dr. Becky Campbell on social media. She's a good friend of mine. Jolene Brighton. Jolene Dr. Brighton, Jolene yeah. Brighton. She's also very good. But the the forum is free and you'll actually be able to talk to and ask questions on there and maybe get directed in ways that that could help you out. Because uh, I know some stuff about hormones, but that is not our our expertise. Yeah. And if, if you are my client, that's who I would send you to 100%. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And again, I appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's, um, boy, what a smart way to market a program. I'll tell you what, <laughs> you know, take this test based off of your hormone or take this test based off of your blood well, type. Blood type your, this is the one I've seen quite a bit. So yeah. this is a new spin off that it seems. Yeah. But. The hormone one's brilliant though, because everybody that has ever dealt with any hormone issues has always gotten sure. a recommendation from the doctor on how they need to like adjust their training. Yeah. So yeah. that like light bulb goes off like, oh, my doctor already said I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't do that now because of this. So, oh, this makes sense that there's this hormone yep. test that I can take and find out what programming is best for me. It's like, uh, it's that's generic well, I mean, advertising just to get you to give you an example. Like you could be a man with low testosterone and it could be a vitamin D deficiency or it could be your stress is too high. You're not getting mm-hmm. enough. There's so exactly. many reasons why your hormones may look a particular way. So just to look at a hormone profile and then boom, spit out a program without further testing further. Right. Like I would watch my clients and see if what I'm doing is working or not. Well, that's why I made the point of like, you know, ideally and what you said originally, right. Which is having a trainer who's good and can ask those questions because that's how I, I mean, if she was my client one, I would defer to people like Jolene Brighton, like Becky Campbell, like Steven Cabral, guys that are way more and girls that are way more uh, advanced in this in this category. But then, meanwhile, while I'm training her, I'd be trying different things with our routine and getting feedback. That's it. You know, how did you feel? Oh, are you still sore? Yeah. Oh, you didn't sleep very well. Okay, let me yeah. adjust this. Or oh, that you feel great. Stress management. I mean, finding where they're at and then you know really trying to like get closer and closer to that optimal dose. Yeah. Totally. Um, look, if you like our show, you got to check out mindpumpfree.com. We have guides on there that can help you do a lot of different things, and they're totally free. So we have muscle building guides, fat loss guides, guides for specific body parts. We even have guides for personal trainers. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.